I got to ask you, <laughs> five fights, 15 months. I mean, that's such an impressive schedule. Do you think that that's something that really benefited you going into this fight is the fact that you never really got out of shape? It, you, you've had a lot of octagon time. Was it, it just, did it feel good to go in there, just ha having this be your fifth fight and having you be so active? Yeah, honestly, I think that's a huge uh, part of it where it's like a different comfort zone, right? Like, you know, usually you always get fight week jitters, but I literally, I feel like I'm here all the time now, yeah. whether I'm on the desk yeah, or yeah, I'm yeah. fighting, it's like, it's just a normal, uh, normal week for me. And, um, you know, like you said, I don't get out of shape. I'm not one of those guys after a, a win, uh, I go on long vacation or anything. Like I said, we're a small gym. So if one of us got a fight, Ignacio Bahamandes had a fight uh, a couple, of, uh, like a month before me. So I had to be in the gym with him, help him out for his opponent. Uh, and I think that just like keeps me more active and keeps me in shape. I don't like to get out of shape. I like, once you get out of shape, then the whole, the first four weeks of camp yeah. is getting in shape. Right, and then right, right. you're really not focusing on the fight. So the timing does work out kind of perfectly for you to maybe fight Gilbert Burns. <laughs> um, I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Do you, obviously I know you, you actually have a personal beef to where you would like to punch Colby in the face, <laughs> but it does sort of look like maybe Colby and Hamza will be together, right? So what do you think is really your next option? Honestly, I don't think they're going to be together. Don't I, don't, so? I don't think Colby's going to take that fight. I think, think Colby's calling for 55ers. I don't think Colby's going to look at a tough fight. Colby thinks he's that, that big money fight, and he mm -hmm. wants to, oh, give me Kamara one more time, give me Kamara one more time, or give me a Nate Diaz or something like that. I don't think he's going to take the, uh, the tough challenge. Yeah. For me, I'm going to be that guy that wants the tough challenge. Uh, I'm just that guy that everybody's saying he deserves a title shot. So put me in line. Put me with the next best guy in line that's that's winning. I, like I said, I, I'm number six right now. If I have to go through five, four, three, two, one, I will do that because they're not handing me anything. Well, I you have just to, took out number five. Yeah, so yeah. now I'm number five. So now I got to go four, <laughs> three, two, one. Uh, and I'm down for it. Like, I don't expect to, to be handed anything on a silver plate. If I have to go through all those guys to be the champ, I'll do it. Uh, I, Bilal, I just want to ask you, I would love to see either of those fights with you and Gilbert, you uh, um, and Colby. Going back to this fight, Third round was probably Luque's biggest round, right? He landed that power shot on you. You looked a little bit wobbled right there. What was going through your mind at that point, man, when he was starting to press on you and you were trying to get your wits back again? Yeah, it's one of those, like, when he smells blood, like, he stays in your face the whole time. It was like, I got hit and my eye was just, like, a little bit watery, so I was, like, trying to focus on it, but then, like, he's in your face the whole time. So it was nothing really, like, really dazing of me, but it was just like, all right, get your wits back together. Get your wits back there. We're not... We've, we've taken his best punch before. Uh, we could get through this one, and I'm not the same guy. You know, it obviously goes back in your head like, is this going to happen again? This is not going to happen again. This is not going to happen. Get, get, get your feet underneath you. My coaches are screaming to me, you're good, you're good, you're good. So it's like just trying to listen to my corner, stay calm. With the apex, there's not a crowd going nuts. So it's like it was easier to stay calm in that uh, moment. You know, I got to ask you, Bilal, aside from who you could be matched up against, your game plan, I really want to talk about how you go about these fights during Ramadan. Yeah. Take yes. us, kind of yeah. give us Amazing. a little insight as to what this takes because people don't really, I think people have an idea what it entails, but I want you to kind of give us a brief little walkthrough of what you go through as you go through camp and prepare yourself not only for training camp, but for these fights when you're practicing Ramadan. And now that it's 930 at night and you're in victory <laughs> lane, I want you to also tell us what's going to be the victory meal tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's the hardest thing I tell. Like literally every year I tell myself, I'm like, no more Ramadan camps, no more Ramadan camps. <laughs> <laughs> and then they always keep calling me for it. Um, and I'm a guy that's never going to say no. It's like just the mentality of, the, all right, well, whatever. I don't really care about the date. They call me with a five-round main event. I'm going to take it. Um, but it's just, I tell people, all the time, it's less like a lot of mental toughness because uh, I'll sit there and it, every night it has to be like a, a weight cut. So, like, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. and uh, I have to eat the right carbs. I have to eat right rice, white potatoes, uh, get my protein in and make sure I'm getting the right fluids in. I have to get uh, the right liquids in. I, I got a nutritionist that I talk to now where I do it very smart, where it's like if I don't get the right things in, then the next morning my whole practice is going to be trash. And so last week we're training at 10.30 a.m. And then uh, I had a couple of days uh, out the week where I'm still doing two practices before I break my fast at 7.30. Um, but then I also have my teammates where some of them are fasting with me. They're telling me, like, yo, I'm going to fast with you. We do this together. And I tell them, no, I don't want you. I want you to give me a good uh, challenge. Because I've been through it. I know what it is. Like, you don't have to do it. No, no, no we're going to be with you, too. So just having that support team around me. And then a lot of the teammates were like, yo, let's train at 9.30 p.m. at night. After you're done eating, you digested everything, we'll come at night with you. We'll, we'll get the, that training session. I'm like, bro, you guys got work in the morning. You don't have to. But like I said, we're a small family. And the fact that they were able to do that and willing to do that for me uh, it just meant the world. And it just told me that, you know, I got all those people that want me to win. Like, they're not those fake teammates or mm -hmm. fake friends that – are like secretly hoping you lose. Like they want to see you win. And uh, those are the ones that are pushing with me. So Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.